Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the IGFS All Hands Call. It is March the 23rd, 2020. Welcome, welcome. It's nice to see you all. Um, today we have a special presentation from Jin. Uh, we are talking about uh, connecting the metaverse with IPFS. Uh, thank you for coming, Jin. Please take it away. Hello. Um, I'm going to screen share. Um, so, one moment. All right. Is my screen Sean? All right, cool. Yep. So uh, a little bit about uh, my background and motivation. So it feels like we're getting closer and closer to living in this reality of a massive persistent digital reality that's adjacent to our own, something like Snow Crash, Neuromancer, Ready Player One. Um, However, uh, the future where the cyberspace is built in many cases is largely built and owned by a single company. And this is a problem because with a medium like VR and AR, which hoovers up a lot of data about our surroundings, actions, reactions, um, it's, it's dangerous. And so building the open metaverse is a moral imperative. But who's building it? We've got a lot of companies here, but how many of them are actually building the open metaverse? How many of them are actually building open source? How many are even collaborating? And so uh, what we've kind of uh, been working on is building on the foundations like Neil Stevenson described it as the successor to the internet. And uh, that's, where we kind of start off with and what the web is based on. Um, but the web itself is getting more and more centralized. Y'all know this more than others. I mean, but I mean, from the browser market share perspective, Chrome is eating most of the browser market share. And so that's kind of worrying. And also Unity, uh, most of the games and VR and AR experiences are built with a non-free gaming engine. And even at one point, Facebook was mulling a multi-billion dollar acquisition of Unity. And even more troubling is social VR. So in the future, I think that VR and social VR are going to be synonymous with each other. But for all those companies that are building social VR platforms, everything represented here uh, right now 99.9% .9 of all social VR is built with a non-free engine. And so that's also kind of worrying from the landscape perspective. Um, what we focus on really is, uh, oh, and most of the funding for open source social VR was absorbed by only two companies. And so it's looking kind of dismal for the open metaverse. What we work on is uh, kind of emerging the metaverse out of what already exists, open standards and the web itself. And WebXR is a kind of a movement that's happening with developers that are building VR experiences um, using JavaScript and HTML. Basically, this API is how browsers talk to HMDs. And so the advantage is you have no gatekeepers. You don't have to ask permission from the App Store. There's less friction. You can just enter a virtual world with the link and the openness, view source, that is something that none of these uh, platforms can offer. And what we've been doing is we've been experimenting with IPFS and that for a long number of years now. I'll show you an example. Here's something from, I believe, 2016, um, where we can open up a portal into an IPFS uh, hosted world. And this takes us to another virtual world. So this is kind of a metaphor for the internet in which instead of websites, you have web spaces and portals representing links. We can take this a step further as well, um, in which IPFS uh, assets such as um, images, models, whatever, we can pull them out and use those IPFS uh, assets in the game 
and just decentralize the whole um, experience from what it's made out of as well. So right there, it kind of went by really quickly, but I'm drag and dropping an image out of uh, the IPFS web UI into the world. And each of these worlds, you can view the code for it. Uh, it's basically kind of like a WordPress for VR. And so that's what uh, the, that uh, is called Janus XR. It's basically kind of like a way that you can uh, browse and build uh, web XR experiences with no code. And uh, we use that to build experiences, but there's other frameworks too. There's like A-Frame, which Janus XR also exports and uh, ExoKit, which I'll get into pretty soon, which is kind of a paradigm shift in how these things are all interconnected. And so um, let me see here, classwork and education. There's some other experiments that we did in terms of blending uh, WebXR and IPFS together. Um, this is not directly kind of related, but uh, an experiment in which we could take conference videos that are 2D and then spatialize them into a 3D world. This is all in a browser. And so we took this lib peer-to-peer -peer presentation and because uh, he's standing right behind a solid background, it can be keyed out into an environment here. And then in that environment, we can have extra tools such as a whiteboard um, or a way to uh, take notes on a laptop. And this can be a multiplayer experience. So you could kind of build like a virtual classroom in which we can connect, rewatch um, presentations, take notes, discuss them at our own pace. And so uh, nowadays, we're thinking about how these experiences are made out of, uh, what they're made out of, and just getting a lot of feedback and building a community around them. Uh, we established a working group called M3, which stands for uh, Metaverse Makers. The last M is pretty much silent. And uh, we have uh, virtual meetups in places like right here, which we had one just a couple of days ago. There is 33 people here. You can see here, here's some scans uh, from Ethereum Denver. This is where I was at the IPFS table and uh, heard about this community call. And um, in here, we've got a real awesome environment where we could screen share, we could drag and drop uh, content directly into here if we wanted to. Um, I'll just show you some clips from it's probably hard to see but um, I'll get to the presentation. Uh, so connecting the metaverse with IPFS. Before a lot of these experiences were, um, we'll get to the first, the Unix philosophy. Write programs that do one thing and do it well. Write programs that work together. Write programs to handle text streams because that's a universal interface. Now, virtual worlds. Um, every kind of virtual world platform is trying to do everything currently. They're creating the APIs, the avatars, the worlds, the storage, everything is pretty much rather siloed and you have all these platforms that do not really have any incentive to work together. Um, and they design them for platform lock-in. Um, everything's getting, it's really proprietary. And so how are we doing things differently now? ExoKit is kind of a paradigm shift in which instead of writing um, everything like how in VRChat, VRChat's kind of like the biggest social VR platform, people can upload worlds, people can upload avatars. ExoKit is doing it in which everything is kind of a, a 
can be composited together. So you can have an avatar layer, you can have a world layer, and then these things can then, uh, everything's kind of like a hologram that can composite together. And Xavier has designed this system in which you could log in to, uh, you can add this overlay onto you, uh, like kind of like AR inside of VR essentially. So you're already wearing goggles. So imagine wearing AR glasses inside of any kind of VR application and then using that as the social multiplayer networking layer to communicate with others. And so by logging into this room here, which he did on his wrist, um, he can then connect to an avatar layer in which there's a remote guest here. So this is a hologram. Other people in VR chat can't see it, but AVR can. And this could be someone from a whole different reality, uh, a different platform. So this is kind of this meta layer in which you can talk to people chiming in from the browser into the VR world, even if that VR world isn't designed for it, without ever kind of modifying the client. Um, and he, he's also got some examples of uh, drag and dropping things um, from an inventory system. And uh, so are we a web averse yet? No, it's not a tech problem. Uh, we've got all the tech, um, WebXR, OpenXR, IPFS, Ethereum, all these open standards that make things work. But the thing that's lacking right now is money for open metaverse initiatives, closing the economic loop, which I can show some good examples of uh, in a bit, and then connecting each other. We're discussing these problems at our virtual uh, meetups inside of Hubs, which is an open source, it's kind of like Zoom on steroids in a way, where you can meet up here, you have an avatar, you could take notes and um, spawn them, even images as well. I'll uh, see, let's find an image. And uh, if someone's standing far away, it can be full screened too. So it's a real awesome platform for brainstorming. What we wanna use this for and what's coming up pretty soon is an awesome event that the Japanese XR community has made. Um, so because of all the conferences and, and physical events that are getting canceled, I think this is a real excellent opportunity to have um, presence with others in a virtual world to ideate how we could all collaborate in building, um, you know, the, the next version of the internet together. Because I believe that IPFS is providing the data layer and what we're doing is building the UI and UX layer for when interfaces change uh, from flat screens to immersive displays such as head mount displays and glasses and i believe that's coming this sometime this decade they're going to become lighter weight more frictionless and it's interesting because every time i log into these virtual worlds um things like coronavirus it's a global conversation and there's a lot of uh really great use cases which it's not just for gaming um, it can be really productive. Uh, some people might uh, be on the sidelines waiting until it's good enough to uh, actually kind of replace the office, but I think we can use this right now to brainstorm kind of uh, like sharing a, a, a space in which there's a whiteboard. And then um, right over here, we've got the IPFS ecosystem. Imagine instead of this 2D graphic, this represents a top-down view of an expo show floor, or like a, you know, like a kind of an expo experience in which each of these has its own booth. 
a virtual booth. And I'll show you an example of something that was created by Japanese community in which in six months ago, they had a VR festival. They had 600 exhibitors and about 14 worlds. And each of these booths were designed from basic guidelines on um, scene limitations and uh, templates as well if people didn't want to design from scratch. And they were doing commerce in here mostly for like avatars and wearables. But I think that this concept can extend itself to something like um, like a, you know, a conference that can be what you saw in that graphic where it's different projects in an ecosystem. So in here you see these are all user generated booths. There are 600 this year and one month from now, uh, Virtual Market 4 is going to be out in which they have 1400 exhibitors. Every half a year, every six months, it's been getting bigger and bigger from 100 to 400 to 600 to 1400. And uh, if anyone is interested, I'm, I'll be hosting a virtual field trip. Uh, you don't need VR. As you can see, I'm on desktop mode and every virtual world uh, should have desktop mode support in my opinion. But uh, you're welcome to join us and discuss how we could possibly create uh, a virtual experience, an uh, expo experience like no other, and start to kind of think about how this, how these tools, how this ecosystem can extend itself into the metaverse. And in this way, we can all be connected. Because right now, all the links to these worlds over here, or these projects, they're all on separate URLs, you know? And so it is kind of not really connected, but in this way, we take it one step kind of like to the next level in which we can all be in the same plane of existence. And this conference I'm in right now, this, this happened six months ago and I'm able to teleport back to it. That doesn't happen with physical conferences that last for a few days and then everything gets torn down. And so it has this kind of advantage of uh, you can always go back to it. You can take walks, invite others, discuss things. And so if you design a virtual booth, it can live forever and you can keep uh, updating it as you wish. And uh, we're finding ways to connect things like this with uh, Ethereum. Uh, a lot of these QR codes go to a backend payment processor. Um, has nothing to do with blockchain or crypto or IPFS, but I think that's kind of our uh, advantage, our edge. And I want to create kind of something in this uh, style of virtual market, um, but for the Web3 community and especially uh, crypto arts, uh, because I'm really involved in the crypto art scene and. I think we can do something really awesome in like a virtual desert, which is why uh, this world is designed inside of a desert. So we can start to uh, brainstorm in here and we've got a laser pointer, we can draw, we can drag and drop, and we can just start to um, mock up ideas for how to build a uh, kind of a metaverse expo experience powered by IPFS and um, kind of chart our way to a more connected metaverse together. And, you know, this is this platform I'm in, it's not WebXR as I was describing, but we can use WebXR not just as the distribution platform, but as the uh, creation platform that then can, um, you know, be ported into other platforms. So it's not just for, uh, it's not just for uh, experiencing things, it's also like for uh, building experiences as well. But VRChat, which is the one I'm in right here, it has the most amount of users. Uh, virtual Market, in their past events, they've had hundreds of thousands of visitors in a, 
over a course of like five days. So the, this community com working completely remotely to build these virtual experiences, they've been able to get, I don't know, in one year ago, they had 125,000 visitors, which is more than Art Basel. And um, it's really inspiring uh, to see them all collaborate together. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've got for you all. Nice, amazing presentation, thank you. Uh, so we've got some time for a few questions. We've probably got five minutes left. If anyone has any, would you like to shout out or put it in the chat? Um, do we have any, I really like the uh, virtual presentation, like pulling, pulling Jacob out of his, out of his video into into a virtual world. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I've been, go ahead. I, so I had a question about WebXR. I, like I'm, I'm uh, shamefully not well versed in this like VR space and, at all, but like wh what is WebXR support like in, in browsers right now? Um, Oculus Quest, any kind of VR headset that's out right now, instead of downloading something, you just visit a link and then you can go into VR mode. So that's basically all it does. It, it just connects uh, headsets to the browser, but there should always be desktop support as well. Um, oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, and so, then, so uh, ExoKit. So I'm like I'm a little bit confused about what the what ExoKit's providing, and is it so? Is it kind of like uh, the VR chat, but slightly? It's, is it it's kind of like a meta layer in which, uh, yeah. with ExoKit in any kind of VR world, imagine you have AR glasses on at the same time, and that connects you to a web metaverse and you can composite uh, different apps together. So like right now, I'm in this world only. And if I wanted to go to any other world, completely separate experience. And that's just the way that uh, VR has been designed from since forever and any, any video game in general. What ExoKit's doing is it's treating everything kind of like as a, uh, a virtual, holographic layer that can all start to composite together. It's like the Unix philosophy applied to virtual worlds in which, um, yeah, you can basically bring in assets from other worlds into other places, put one game into another game. Um, so it's like, a, it's a paradigm shift in design thinking and how uh, these virtual worlds are um, created and shared across places and in a completely permissionless fashion. So like, if you see this gun that you just withdrew from the uh, inventory, imagine that could be an asset that could be like hosted on IPFS, ENS, um, maybe something that he picked up from a virtual market and wants to try it out and, and show it off to a friend in another game. Nice. Yeah, I, I think I get it. The, it's so this is kind of like augmented reality, but augmented virtual reality. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So. I love it. Yeah. Interesting. That's cool. Um, okay. So we have a question in the chat from Molly. She says, love the conference booth style ecosystem diagram idea. Any interest in actually helping host a conference or meet up for the community? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm interested if anyone else is. Uh, for example, I did a virtual meetup a couple of days ago. Um, and we had 33 people in hubs and then we did an after party in VR chat. And uh, it took me, you know, a couple of days of planning and we had two awesome presentations. Um, last year we did uh, 17 virtual uh, meetups and a few research trips as well. And we have a research trip coming up for traveling through these blockchain virtual world projects like crypto voxels and Decentraland and Somnium Space. And we're gonna just be discussing them. 
but uh, I'd be really interested in just, you know, taking it to the next level, but in baby steps, you know, first we can meet up in this uh, browser-based world and discuss how to uh, keep, uh, you know, going uh, to the next level, uh, designing something bigger and awesomer. But I like this always because it's, you know, accessible from a browser link and uh, nobody needs any software to visit. Yeah, nice. Cool. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, in terms of all those different companies in the ecosystem, uh, if they need help to uh, design a booth, for instance, like we're going to come out with some templates. Um, and then we can offer services for uh, designing custom booths as well so that they can have presence and then they'll have the asset uh, forever. And so if we ever want to host another virtual meetup or change the location, they can easily port that asset into the next uh, experience. Cool. Love it. Um, all right. We, we're kind of out of time or nearly out of time. Um, thank you so much for coming and presenting to us. Uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. Um, if people want to like, talk to you or chat with you, what's the best way to get in contact? Yeah, the best way, uh, I live on Discord nowadays, but uh, if you just follow me on Twitter, at uh, bankvr, um, that's the easiest way to reach me. Nice. All right. Cool. Thanks again for coming. Uh, thank you, everyone else, for uh, for uh, for being here as well. Thank you, Will, for taking the notes. Uh, and uh, and we will see you next week. Uh, and we will have another exciting presentation. Uh, it's going to have to live up to this one, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Bye, bye, everyone. Thanks again. See y'all.